Hey YouTube, Eric here from Guided. On this week's episode, I am going to be setting up a customer's rifle. My uh, father-in-law is a Huskama scope dealer. He sells quite a few scopes to his hunters. When they buy a scope, if they don't want to do all the work themselves, as far as setting up a custom turret, they have me do it. The customer supplied the gun, the ammo, bought the scope, and I ordered the rings for him. And we're gonna get it all put together here. And I'm gonna kind of go through the steps of how to set up a custom turret on a new rifle. It's a pretty nice rifle. So anyway, stay tuned. It's gonna be a good show. So this is a fierce carbon rival in a 300 PRC. And this is a very nice rifle. Very, very nice. I've seen them in the store, but I've never held one. And I've never, never actually shot one. I'm really excited about this rifle. I think um, I had a lot of guys comment on the 300 PRC. They wanted me to get rid of that 338 Lapua and go with the 300 PRC. And looking at the ballistics, I can see what you guys are saying. Very, very good ballistics on this caliber. Um, I think it's designed and engineered a really nice caliber for long range shooting. And hopefully this video will kind of show you guys how I do step-by-step step setting up a rifle for custom turret. I'm going to show you all of the product I'm going to be using and kind of go over just briefly on each one. Spotting scope, Koa uh, TSN 884. I have a tipped in carbon fiber cleaning rod that I'm going to use. Shooting bags, I've gone over this one. This is the one I carry in the field. This is a cross tack bag. Um, cross tack bag and then this bag is heavy it's got sand in it um, that's a custom job actually my mother-in-law made that for me I threw a Butler Creek sling on it very very nice bags heavy it's perfect for what we're doing here impact hearing protection and let's get on to the chronograph chronograph I'm using is the competition electronics pro chrono DLX it does have the availability to com to communicate with your phone but I don't do that I just read the off the dial onto the scope like i said guys my father-in-law is a dealer for huskama optics and we get a lot of guys that hunt with us and a lot of guys that that just buy just buy the scopes off of him and then if they don't want to set it up themselves either they don't have the time or they don't have the range um, a lot of guys know how to do it some guys don't they usually leave it for me and i do this uh for them for a service so anyway my optic this is the 5 to 20 by 50 30 millimeter tube went with uh, fierce rings the medium height rings for that rifle over there um, customer also dropped off the ammo he wanted us to try this is a uh, Hornaday Precision Hunter 212 grain ELDX which I do like Hornaday bullets I am running um, this is just a torque screwdriver for when I torque everything down. Obviously a little bit of Loctite, blue Loctite. And then this gunsmithing kit that I have, I bought this on Midway USA. They were out of stock on them for a long time. This gunsmithing kit, I think for the money, you cannot beat this. You know, pretty much anything that you can think of as far as tips, bits, flathead, torques, torques over here allen heads um, and then even these specialty ones so very cool little little kit i recommend that so you guys know i purchased everything on this board except he supplied the ammo the scope and the gun i'm going with the wheeler level kit for the scope so anyway back over to the rifle here um here we go all right guys Got it all set up here. I got it uh, mounted and bore sighted, torqued down to spec, got the base torqued down, the rings torqued down, the scope mounted, leveled, and we are ready to roll. I'm gonna get the chronograph set up here. We are gonna get this thing off the lead sled and onto the bags, and we're gonna start shooting this thing. I'm gonna chronograph while I'm sighting it in, and uh, we're gonna go from there. I'll go step by step. Step one's over, mounting the bore sighting, leveling, torquing and gonna go on to the next step here so hopefully you guys like this video like this content please like and subscribe if you haven't been here before and uh let's roll here that's a good looking round right there guys that is that bullet is definitely seated out a lot further um than a 300 wind mag i know it's a totally different case totally different shoulder pretty much all new doesn't have a, a belt on the bottom of the case anyway 
These are the 212 grain ELDX. Really interested to see how this is going to perform down range here. So, all right, guys, here we go. I got her bore sighted, and uh, we're going to go ahead and take a shots here. So. I hit right on top of the edge of the paper, so I'm going to bring her down here. And the chronograph is reading 2830. This uh, ammo out of this gun, and the box is saying 2860. So it's not far off from what what uh, Hornaday is is actually stating on this uh, ammo. So that's a good thing. Um, anytime that you know, it's kind of hard to go by these boxes. They're not always correct, but that's why you always want to, if you're going to set up a custom turret, you always want to actually chronograph the bullet. So anyway, I'm going to bring it down here. And so another thing on these Husqvarna scopes, they are one click is equivalent to basically one third of a, one third of an inch. So 0.36. Um, so three clicks is equal to an inch essentially. Um, so I need to go for seven inches. So we're going to go 21 clicks down um i'm going to actually move it to the left slightly it was about an inch and a half off so nice that one was 28 20 so i'm not going to touch it i'm just going to uh try to shoot a group here Looks like I shot about a three eighths to a half inch away from the other one. That one was 2884, so it was a little bit higher. That one was 2887. I'd like to shoot at least six or seven shots through the chronograph to kind of get a good average for the number that I use for the, for the turret. So that one was 28.99, and that one actually jumped up just a little tiny bit. I don't think I pulled it, but I guess you never know. Um, I could have. Nice. That one there was 28.99 as well, and I shot in the same hole as one of the other ones. So I think I'm going to be done. Um, I've shot, I shot six through the chronograph. All right, guys, so here we go. That looks like a pretty nice group to me. Um, like I said, this this one here was that flyer, and it could have been me pulling it. I don't know, but I shot one, two, there's at least three. There's three shots in there, and then you have this one, so... From the center of this one to the center of this one, that's probably an inch. Because we're inside this line and we're right on that line. So it's probably just under an inch. But then you have this flyer here. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to... Uh, I shot six shots out of this rifle. I'm going to go ahead and run a cleaning rod down through there. I actually never looked up what Fierce's recommendations are for breaking in their barrels. But maybe I'll look that up here real, real quick and get back at you guys. So... All right, so I'm back at the bench here. I looked it up and um, Fierce recommends that you shoot one shot, then you clean it and you do that for five shots. And then then you shoot five in a row and then you clean it. And then you do that for the next 15 shots. Regardless, I think the, the gun is definitely shooting pretty good, but I'm going to clean it. I'm gonna shoot five more shots. I might do that for this for the remaining box and then go up to the range and uh, with the other box so yeah we're gonna i'm gonna clean it and i'm gonna shoot shoot and then clean it shoot and then we'll go up to the range so you go to the huskama website huskama optics click on that and then you're gonna go to this bc calculator right here this is gonna take you down and you say get your data and this is what it's going to take you to, guys. It's going to take you to this screen right here. 
And so we are going to go and put all this information. They give you an option to pick the um, deer size game, elk size game. I'll show you what that does. So let me just pick deer. So go to manufacture the bullet. It's Hornaday. Select the bullet. Go down to 30 caliber, 308. And go down here. We're going to hit 212. ELDX and then we're going to elevation 4500 temperature now it just throws it populates a, a, a random temperature in there but actually the temperature today and when you're doing this card you want to do what your conditions are when you're doing this and the reason is because when you print your chart out, you want those conditions the same as what you're shooting at the long range. So today, it's like 50 degrees out there right now. It's probably going to be about 55 by the time I get to the range. So I'm going to go 55 degrees. The pressure, I'll have to look that up on my phone. Humidity, about 50%. And this wind speed is always standard at 10. My scope height is a standard 1.75. I did zero, I'm gonna zero it, have it zero at 200. And the zero just inches, nothing. Inclination is zero, because we're shooting level. And the click value, now it's 0.33 on here, okay? So this is this is the click value for Husqvarna scope. So you could actually use this calculator for a different scope and whatever your whatever scope you actually want to do it for, you'd have to change. A lot of scopes are 0.25 MOA per click. So this is 0.33. So I'm leaving that the same. Going to go down here. Now you can either type in the ballistic coefficient of your bullet or you click on here, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to change it to 20, 2830 was my average velocity on that. So, start range is 100 yards. Now, when I say start range, start range is on your, on the drop chart. And when I go out to 1500 yards, just for the, just for this chart. So, anyway, um, the, you're gonna see here because I picked deer, antelope, medium sized game. We're gonna hit calculate, and then we're gonna scroll down here. And when you pick when you pick this antelope or deer and you hit calculate after you put all your parameters in here it says right here be advised potentially non-lethal distances found the distances marked in red may not have enough kinetic energy to humanely kill medium-sized game so that's where this whole medium-sized deer and antelope choices and that's what this is so if you scroll down it this on this chart it's telling you that at thir at fourteen hundred yards this bullet when I'm shooting a three hundred PRC is falling below the recommended thousand foot pounds of energy that they recommend to kill a average size animal. So we're going to so see how it says 980 yards or 980 kinetic foot pounds of energy. So it's below a thousand, so that's why it's red from there on out. Now let's go up here and click on elk. Okay. We'll go down here and hit calculate. So it just changed it. it says large size now. Go down here. And there now look at this. So they're recommending at least 1,200 foot pounds of energy to kill an elk size animal at any distance, at least 1,200 foot-pounds energy. So once it falls below that's 1,200 foot-pounds energy, then it, that's what you're seeing here in red. So for elk size game. So they're recommending 11, or 11, they're recommending nothing over 1,200 yards to kill an elk humanely is what it's saying. So that's what this red means. So that's what, if you see that red, that's what that means. Anyway. So we got the chart, and regardless of the of what you pick, regardless if you pick large game or or medium game, the the clicks are the same. It's all the same clicks. 
So basically, if you look at your card here, with the information that I inputted um, at 100 yards, it's telling you it's going to be four point. I'm sorry, it's going to be positive. It's going to be 4.2 clicks above the 200 yard zero. So at 200 yards, it's going to be zero, and then it tells you how many clicks on your turret you have to turn it to get to these distances. And and the reason why you need this chart is so when you actually go up to the range to confirm, you want to confirm what this chart is telling you. And if you and if you get different numbers, different clicks at say 500 yards, if we shoot 500 yards and it's selling you 21 clicks, if you turn it to 21 and you shoot and you miss the target, and if you shoot and shoot and you miss the target, then you know it's not you, you know it's the gun. It means the clicks are not coinciding with this. So you have to shoot it until you get the clicks, whatever click you need to get hitting the target. So anyway, I'm going to print this off. Um, print range card. So you hit print range card. I'm going to hit print. All right, guys. So this is the card. All right, guys. So I just got the, um, I updated the chart. The pressure was a little higher than I thought and the uh, temperature was actually a little higher than I thought. So I put in, I inputted what, what it's actually, what the current conditions are. And so I am going to uh, show you the next step. So I got the, I got the chart here. This is the, this is the drop chart, the click chart that I need for when I go up to the range here. And so the next step is, see this factory turret here? So what I gotta do is, I, since I'm since I'm sighted in now, I have to take this turret. I gotta take this cap off here and turn this, take this turret and turn it back to zero. So when I actually go to my clicks, so when I go up to the range and I shoot at say 350 yards, it's gonna tell me 10 clicks that my turret is actually zeroed. So and I do the same thing for the windage. See how it's off. You can see how it doesn't line up. So I'm going to take this cap off and then move this and I'll show you here in a second. So, Alright guys, so I just got it loose here with a coin and you basically just take this cap off here. Take this cap off and you can just pull this turret right off. You can see them splines. See them splines? That's what matches up with the splines. It's going to be hard to see. Anyway, there's splines inside there, right there, you can see them. So. Without turning this, you want to just take this off and take this thing down to zero. And you want this zero hash mark to line up with this hash mark here. So it doesn't... So that does right there. Alright, so I got this mark lined up with this mark. And you don't want to worry about this this zero stop ring right now. So once you zero that, you just put this cap back on there and tighten it back down here. All right, so I'm doing the windage knob now. So basically you just line that zero up with this hash mark, which it is right there. So, all right guys, I'm up here at the our long range here, you guys probably noticed this from the other video where I shot the jugs from. Today, because I'm going to be just setting up the target, I'm going to be shooting off this bench and going to be hidden. I'm going to walk a target down there, 200 yard target. Usually I just put a box up. Once I sight it in at 200 yards, basically I'm plotting two points on an arc. 350 yards, you know, as the bullet's arcing, and then 700 yards. And with two points, on that arc, um, you're going to get more accurate data for when they cut the turret. There's nothing wrong with this going out and shooting 500 yards, you know, and having only that data. You, that's fine, but if you really want to be accurate, it's nice to have two points on an arc. I usually do 450 and 700, but I'll show you. The rancher's got hay bales, targets right behind those hay bales, so. 350 yards is right there, and then 700 yards is up there by that sagebrush. So, so I'm going to walk this target down there and come back, and we'll shoot 
get it sighted in at 200 yards and then we'll go out from there and I'll show you what I do as far as the chart goes and how many clicks and basically all that part of it so got the target down there I uh, just have a box out for the 200 yard target I just got to make sure this thing's zero to 200 and then we'll go from there on to the next step I'm gonna get you guys in the spotting scope here and show you what we're looking at here Just, just a box with a circle in it. That's exactly 200 yards. You gotta make sure it's sighted at 200 and then we're gonna go out from there. All right guys, looks like I hit a little bit low. I'm gonna bring it up. All right, so I hit up and down perfect. I hit just right outside the left edge of the circle. So I'm gonna bring it over to the right one click so it looks like i hit just inside the uh the black ring so one click moved me probably about an inch and a half from one edge to the other edge i'm just going to leave it there and i'm going to go out here we have virtually no wind which is which is really good for here in wyoming but i'm going to go out here onto this next target, which is 350 yards. And I'm gonna show you guys what I gotta do here. So here's the chart I printed off. This chart tells me the number of clicks. So this next target is 348 yards steel plate. So we're gonna go stick with 350 and it's telling me I need to go 10 clicks. So I, because I have already adjusted the scope from the 100 yard range to the 200 yard range. I need to re-zero this turret. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna re-zero this turret and the windage turret because I did make one adjustment on that too. The chart says 10 clicks for 350 yards and 10.1 clicks, you can't do 0.1. One, nine, ten. This bottom ring, you don't do anything with that right yet. Not till you get the custom turret. So. so if you guys are doing this by yourself with no spotter, the best thing you could do is have a spotting scope as close to you as possible, almost over your shoulder, with a uh like I'm doing with the phone scope and have my phone in there recording. Because you know, this gun recoils, even with the muzzle brake, it recoils pretty good. So once I shoot, it, I lose my sight picture. I can hear it with the, the muffs and I can also play it back on my phone. So yeah, if you guys are doing it by yourself, definitely have your phone running through your spotting scope. So, all right guys, here we go. 350 yards, 10 clicks. And this is basically to confirm that the chart and the bullet are doing the same thing. Sounds like I hit it. I'm gonna play it back here and see exactly where I hit it. All right guys, so I'm going to, I'm not gonna to touch the scope. I did hit it. So I'm gonna shoot one more time at this. All right guys, looks like I hit. It kind of pushed the plate back around behind the post. Kind of deceiving, but I'm gonna go out to the six, 700 yard target now. So we're back, we're out at 700 yards now. So you go to the chart, 700 yards, and we're gonna go over and it says 40.8. So it's 40.8 total from zero, from your 200 yard zero. So I had already went 10, I'm just gonna continue on to get out to 40.8. I'm actually gonna go to 41. So 41 clicks and I'll get you in the spotting scope. Sounds like I hit it. I could hear it in the muffs here. Let me look in the scope. All right, so I did hit it and I hit it high, high left. Um, I'm gonna shoot it again. I'm gonna bring it down one click. Send another one out there here, guys. So I missed it. So maybe at 700 yards, one click made a big difference. I don't know, let me look. All right, so I probably pulled it just for the fact that I shot right over the target. 
look like on the on the spotting scope. I'm gonna shoot it again at 40. Missed it again. All right, so it shot over it again. Alright guys, so what I was noticing was that barrel was getting smoking hot, not from the shooting, but from being in the sun. And so what I noticed is, is as I was shooting, I was coming close, but then I was getting higher, my bullet impacts were getting higher and higher above the target. And I shot multiple times to confirm that, basically to make sure it wasn't me just pulling it, but the heat was definitely affecting how how many clicks I was needing to adjust because it was the hotter it got, the 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 higher it was shooting. So anyway, I'm gonna shoot again here. Let's see what we're hitting. Sound like I missed it. All right, guys. Still shooting high, so I adjusted it back down to where it was. Let's see if we can hit the target. There we go, baby. I hit it that time. All right, so it's very important that you shoot two different points on the on the arc. Um, and this is a prime example. The chart told me 41, I shot 41. I did hit the target high. I made a couple of adjustments and then my bullet was continuously going higher and higher. And I had to actually bring it down to 36 clicks. So it said 41 on the chart. I actually had, to, I had this happen a couple other times where the bullet was actually shooting flatter than what the chart was saying. And it was, it was warming up. It was hotter than what I printed my chart off of or off at. So always shoot two points, different yardages when you're creating your arc uh, for your data. And uh, yeah, if you do that, you're gonna get way better uh, of an accurate turret cut for your gun with two points that you shoot. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Basically the next step in this whole process is um, we're going to get on the computer. All right, guys, this is what you want to do. You want to go to the Huskama website. So jumping on here, you're going to go down to the menu. You're going to hit shop optics, and then you're going to go to customize your turret and click on that. When you go down to customize your turret, then this is where you're going to click the single stack. This is what most people that I set up for go with is a single stack turret is 50 bucks and you click on that and then what you do is you go down here when you buy a scope right here it says your first turret is free so once you once you buy the scope and you get all your data like we just did you're going to go down here and then you're going to pick the model of the scope we got blue diamond you're going to type in the serial number the elevation the temperature what grain it was, what bullet, this is all just automatically populated. You're going to type in all this information and all these categories. And you're going to see, see how it says mid-range clicks. You're going to type in how many yards you shot and how many clicks it was. And then you're going to go far range clicks, how many yards it was, how many clicks you had. And then you're going to hit add to cart. And then with all this information, they're going to cut you a custom turret that when you get it in the mail, you're going to go ahead and stick on your gun after you take your factory turret back to zero um but the zero is actually 200 yards zero so all right guys hope this hope you like this uh content um hope this helps some guys out um but yeah this is uh this is how you get your get your turret ordered really the last thing that you got to do is when you after you get the turret in uh in the mail you come back up here and so this turret here, I haven't turned it back to zero yet. It's still on 36. So I'm gonna turn this back to zero. Turn that back to zero. And then when you get the new, make sure you turn this back to zero. 
because when you get the new turret, you take you take this cap off, and then this just pulls off. And then you get the new turret with a 200 yard zero, and you slide it down on there, and you line the 200 yard zero up, which would be right here, with this uh, mark right there. And then once you do that, once you do that, you run this ring up, and they give you a run this ring all the way up. You see how that lines up right there? So once you line that ring up on your custom turret that you just put on, then you uh, they give you a, a little, little screwdriver to tighten it down. Right there's the little head, but you once you put that, that's called your zero stop. So once you stick that on there, you tighten that down. So when you turn your turret out and you go back, it zero stops right on that mark. So. Anyway, hope you guys like this video, like this content. Uh, my name is Eric from Guided. Um, if you haven't been here before, welcome. And if you have been here before, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week.